life of Alfred, Duke of saxe coburg in Gotha. Prince Alfred was born on the 6th of August 1844 at Windsor Castle. He was the second son and fourth child of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. His family nicknamed him Affy and he was second in line of succession to the British throne behind his elder brother, the Prince of Wales, Prince Edward. In later life, he would go on to be known as the Duke of Edinburgh, Earl of Ulster and Earl of Kent from 1866 until he succeeded his paternal uncle, Ernest II, as the reigning Duke of saxe coburg in Gotha in the German Empire. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Alfred was baptised by the Archbishop of Canterbury, William Howley, at the private chapel in Windsor Castle on the 6th of September 1844. He was given three godparents and they were his mother's first cousin, Prince George of Cambridge, his paternal aunt, the Duchess of saxe coburg in Gotha, and his mother's half-brother, the Prince of Lenigan. Alfred remained second in line to the British throne from his birth until the 8th of January 1864. This was the day his brother's first son, Prince Albert Victor, was born, and therefore he was demoted to third in line to the throne. With each new child that his brother had with his wife, he would fall down the ranks and further fall further away from the crown. At only 12 years old in 1856, he joined the Royal Navy. He had to undertake a special entrance exam in the summer of 1858, and this was when he was appointed as naval cadet in HMS Euralis at the age of 14, two years after joining. Two years later, at 16 years old, he was serving on a ship when he paid an official visit to the Cape Colony. It was here that he made a brilliant impression on the colonels and on the native chiefs. While on this trip away, he took part in a large slaughtering hunt of many game animals. And King Otto of Greece abdicated in 1862, and Prince Alfred was chosen to succeed him. But his mother was not impressed with the idea, and so the British government blocked any plans for him to take over the Greek throne. His parents instead had high hopes that he would instead succeed to the Duchy of saxe coburg a year later in 1863, Prince Alfred was promoted to lieutenant in the Navy, where he served on the Corvette HMS Raccoon. It took another three years to be promoted to captain in 1866, and he was appointed to command the Frigate HMS Galita in January 1867. He was described as being a natural leader and a complete natural at handling a fleet. On the 12th of March 1868, he was visiting Sydney for the second time and he was invited by Sir William Manning, President of the Sydney Sailors' Home, to picnic at the beachfront suburb of Clontoff to raise funds for their home. It was during this event that he was wounded in the back by a revolver fired by Henry James O'Farrell a mentally unwell man who had attempted to assassinate the prince. The bullet hit him to the right of his spine and he required medical attention for weeks afterwards. The gun was wrestled out of the arms of the shooter by William Vile with the help of bystanders. He was later presented with a gold watch for saving Alfred's life. Another bystander, George Thorne, was wounded in the foot by O'Farrell's second shot. O'Farrell, the shooter, was arrested at the scene, quickly tried, convicted and hanged on the 21st of April. Alfred got well from the vicious attack. He was able to resume his responsibility of commanding the ship and he then returned home in early April 1868. There were many matches on the cards for Prince Alfred and his mother was just getting started on her meddling matchmaking. She spoke at great lengths with Victoria, Princess Royal, via many letters. In 1862, 
Queen Victoria wrote to Victoria Princess Royal that she wanted Alfred to marry Princess Dagmar of Denmark. She wrote, I hear that the Emperor of Russia has not given up his intention of asking for Alex or Dagmar for his son. I should be very sorry if anything were decided for Dagmar before you had seen her, as it would be one last chance for Afi. His mother would later decide that the match was not convenient due to the anger of the Germans towards Denmark over disputed territories. This was not helped by Alfred being the heir to Coburg. She wrote again to Victoria, Princess Royal, Respecting Dagmar, I do not wish her to be kept for Afi. Let the Emperor have her. Dagmar later married Alexander III and became the Empress of Russia. Another match on the cards was that of Grand Duchess Olga Konstantinovna of Russia. She wrote to Victoria, Princess Royal, It is a great pity that Sunny's charming daughter is a Greek. She would do so well. In 1867, Queen Victoria told Victoria Princess Royal that I had thought and hoped at one time for dear little Olga, who is now to marry King George. Alfred, the shy and handsome prince, was visiting his sister, Princess Alice, who was married to his future bride's first cousin. He met with the 15-year-old Grand Duchess, Marie Alexandrovna, in August 1868. The couple did not get together straight away, as Alfred's job in the Navy kept him away travelling for two years after their first meet-up. Maria and Prince Alfred met again in the summer of 1871, when Emperor Alexander II and his wife visited the Battenbergs again with the 17-year-old Maria and her two elder brothers. Alfred was also there with the Prince and Princess of Wales. The pair were reunited and hit it off immediately. They were very attracted to each other and they spent the following days walking and talking together. They bonded over their common interest in music and they both played musical instruments. Alfred was an amateur violinist while Maria played the piano. Alfred was very interested in music. He loved to play the violin, although he was never able to master it to a high level of skill but it still remained one of his hobbies nonetheless. At a dinner party given by one of his brothers, he was persuaded to play. Sir Henry Ponsby wrote, Fiddle out of tune and noise abominable. His interest placed him in a perfect spot to become a major aid in starting the Royal College of Music, which was created in 1882. It was obvious that the pair wished to marry but an engagement did not take place, perhaps as Alfred would need his mother's permission first. This was unfortunate, as both parents of the pair were against the match. Her father was not fond of his daughter living abroad away from home, and they had a great relationship that he did not want to wither away through marriage to the British crown. The princess was still young, and her father played on this fact as a deterrent to the engagement. He suggested a waiting period of one year, perhaps in the hope he would give up and find someone else. The emperor was also not keen on a British son-in-law. The Russians were particularly anti-English after the Crimean War and politically it seemed a bad idea to engage his daughter to a Brit. The empress shared her husband's views and she found the British culture peculiar as well as perceiving the English people as being cold and unfriendly. She did not believe that her daughter would live a happy life there. Queen Victoria was also not keen on the match. It was unheard of for a British prince to marry a Russian Romanov, of whom was from a religious Orthodox family. The Queen was aware of the perception the Russians had of the English, and ironically, she felt they were unfriendly towards Britain. There was also the matter of trust for Victoria, who did not trust Russian motives with India. Join me in part two to see how the negotiations went for the pair's wedding, as well as the far from traditional Russian-English wedding that went ahead. 
Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.